Atheist Nomads, episode 152, news for June 23, 2016. The podcast you're about to listen to includes cursing and talking about hoo-hahs. Please be advised. We are the Atheist Nomads, bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. Hello, everybody. And joining us today is my lovely wife, Lauren. Hello, everybody. Oh, that's not as good. (laughs) It's not as good. So, uh, Wesley, (laughs) do you have any, uh, any updates for us? Well, I am rocking a new laptop which i put on my credit card Uh, yay so another day older and deeper in debt yeah definitely but um i was in in touch with one of our our listeners and tom he's actually met him when he came to Hmm. town to see shelly siegel oh goodness a year ago but uh i think he's gonna be able to help me out with it a little bit oh nice yay Oh, that's so good. Yeah, and if any of the rest of you want to kick us some money, either as a a new patron or uh, increasing your patronage or on uh, PayPal, um, that will be going to Wesley to help help him recover some of his losses. Yeah, Yeah. so... uh, Do all that stuff. Like us on Facebook. Share with your friends. (laughs) Shop on Amazon with our link. All sorts of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I've been reaching out with Tom and he's been, we've been talking. So, uh, we actually, uh, he came to town recently and hung out for oh, most nice. of the day actually. And fucking got lunch. Yeah. You know, his, his boy, Alex is really fucking cool too. So, Aww. yeah. Yeah. But, uh, anyways, uh, mandates are nice. Aw. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were in uh, Glacier National Park Woo-hoo. and oh, Priest shit. Lake, and it was uh, pretty awesome. I got to drink lots of Montana beer, including what I have right now. I'm showing it to the camera for those of you watching on YouTube. Mountain really? Man. I can't see shit. Ra- right. Other there. camera. It's two cameras. <laughs> oh. That's to YouTube. That's to you. Um, uh, cheers. Mountain Man uh, Scottish Ale. The picture on it looks like my brother if he had less hair. And so <laughs> rather than being a scotch ale, it should be a scott ale. Uh, Cheers. So I don't. We had I, lots I'm of. Not, hug- I'm not even going to say that because it's really gross. Ew! Don't. And I'm going to edit that out. Uh, <laughs> anyway, what was one thing that that I was reminded of uh, while we were out enjoying the the beauties of nature uh, was and eating so many huckleberry flavored things. Yeah. I love was you, Montana. Just how you know, it was absolutely amazing. It was gorgeous. The 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 climate that we got to experience, we were there because we we covered Highway Two, U.S. Highway Two, from Glacier all the way over to you know Priest Lake, and so we got to see a several hundred mile stretch just below the border, and it's an interesting mix of climates. Hmm. You have boreal coming down from Canada, you have coastal climates with large cedar groves, and Rocky Mountain climate. And it's so weird. Like, there was spots where it felt like I should have been on the west side of the Cascades or on the Coast Range. Yeah, the the cedars especially gave it a particularly foreign feeling. It almost felt like the Redwoods at, at the, the cedar big cedar grove in, in Glacier. It was, it was cool. It was, it was really cool. Highly suggested for anyone in the Montana area. Or anybody who can drive up there, especially since under current models, the glaciers will all be gone by 2030. At least, if not 2020. Yeah. We saw what was left of some uh, leftover snowpack. Oh. But the glaciers themselves are almost all gone. Mm-hmm. That's pretty bad. And it's not doing that thing where they shrink away and then they're going to grow back kind of thing. That doesn't happen here. They're, they're, once they're gone, they're gone. So yeah. I had somebody at work who was going off on, oh, yeah, and then they'll grow back. And I'm like, no. <laughs> no. These are glaciers that were left over. If they do, we're talking about... Hundred thousand years from now, or they, they were left so. over from 
the last ice age and then expanded a little bit during the last mini ice age. So they're not coming back until we have another ice age. Which won't be for a long, long time, unless nuclear winter. Or a super volcano. So okay, Yellowstone so could restore so, the so glaciers. So both are possible. Oh, uh-huh. uh, yeah. Yellowstone could restore the glaciers at, at its sister park. Mm. Or something big happens on the San Andreas Fault, mm-hmm. which is moving around a lot now. <laughs> anyway. Well, is, isn't there a, a, a super volcano in the middle of uh, uh, Wyoming anyways? The, the, the giant park there? Yellowstone. Yellowstone. Yellowstone, yeah. That's the one I was talking about. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, Jellystone for the Jellystone. old school oh, Hanna Barbera cartoon fans. But one one thing I was I was reminded of uh, while uh, while they're in, in Glacier was just how stunningly awe inspiringly beautiful it was uh, was that feeling I had my first time at, at Yellowstone, where I sat staring at the side of one of the hills and I choked up. Mm. The sense of awe that I had lost uh, when I when I uh, left religion uh, had come back and. So let's let's talk a little bit about the religious sense of awe with nature. Uh, conservative Christians like to call nature God's second book. The Bible being the first book, which means everything found in the second book is subject to the first book. Uh, which <laughs> we know really, how well that works out. Yeah, yeah. So there you get creationism and and, and the like. Uh, where that can get really interesting is if you're an Adventist, you can't watch secular TV on Sabbath. You can watch Three Angels Broadcasting Network. Uh, that's that's Adventist, independent Adventist programming. Um, but you can't watch just normal stuff unless it's an, it's nature programming. Yeah, because nature you're learning about God's, awesome. God's creation. Uh, just so long as it's not nature programming that is going to be talking about a bunch of evolution. Because, well, that's, that's bad. Like your inner fish, an excellent documentary. Yes, that would not be acceptable Sabbath <laughs> viewing. Uh, that would be viewed as... as not even Bob Ross. No, man. Yeah, no he's kind of little trees, right? That's awe inspiring nature on a painting. Nope, nope, that wouldn't wouldn't okay. cut it. Okay, uh, but that sense They're of lost. that sense of awe, what it really uh, comes down to when you're a believer is you're out there and you're surrounded by all this beauty that you believe is God's like fingerprint, and so you're looking around at all of it and you see God everywhere. Uh, it is a very powerful thing and yet there is a certain hollowness there because you're looking around at all of it and it's like oh wow this is amazing look at what what wonderful thing god has done and that's the end (laughs) with the sense of i have now it's holy shit this is absolutely amazing and wonderful and awesome how did this happen what happened here how did we get three climates all in the same place why is this area right here so much wetter than everything just a couple hundred or just a hundred miles south? Uh, how did these mountains get to where they are? And Lauren has uh, the roadside geology of Montana, so she was reading about how the mountains and glacier got there while we were there in the park. And it's it's just so much cooler to not just be like, oh, wow, this is amazing. End of story. And actually be like, oh, wow, this is amazing. I want to learn everything there is to know about it. <laughs> yes. Always have the roadside geology with you. It's very, very handy book. And, you know, w- one thing that's interesting with it is, at least for me, and, and everybody's experience might be a little bit different who, who was a believer, is it was a much more, more frequently emotional experience with the Christian awe of nature than the naturalistic awe of nature. That I have now uh, what I have now it's more of a there's that that brief moment of emotion that quickly fades well it comes back when I actually start to find out what happened but ends up being a lot more cerebral and I think more meaningful I would totally agree with that yeah we're pretty obsessed with the outdoors we like to have those awe inspiring sunsets or lake views or Mountains, especially, we're really obsessed with the mountains. Mm-hmm. And the idea of going somewhere flat just how holds no interest. No offense to people on flatland. Sorry, Michigan. <laughs> no, there's no, he hates Michigan. 
there's no sorry there. It was the most depressing place I ever lived. <laughs> Kansas too, though. I mean, oh it's yeah, fucking yeah. flat. Yeah, you know, when I left Michigan, I came back to the Northwest. I drove 1,100 miles that first day. I was unwilling to stop until I'd crossed the Continental Divide. I had to get out of the Midwest. And so I finally <laughs> stopped in Laramie, Wyoming. I've, oh, been, yeah. I've been driving for 15 hours. I was exhausted. I was so tired. And it was so late. I didn't even notice the climb to the Continental Divide. <laughs> I kept waiting for it. I was like, okay. Any minute now, I'm going to need to take it out overdrive. Any minute now, I'm going to take it out overdrive. <laughs> See, and then Wesley, and you live in the is. perfect spot because you've got ocean with its perfect sunsets and mountains and Oh, yeah. We got glaciers. We got deserts. We got green. We got it all. We want to be over there soon. Yeah. I mean, you want a bunch of, you want a fuckload of rain? Go to the, go to the coast. You want mm-hmm. a decent amount? Come where I'm at. You want to, live in the you know, kind of high desert go to, on the other side of the other mountains and get like 10 14 inches around yeah. here like where we and, are now yeah i mean we got yeah. we, everything you want everything <laughs> is possible in washington state mm-hmm. including yeah. legal pot i was just gonna oh, say somebody yeah. make a pot comment somebody do it all right so wesley what happened mm. on this day in history oh goodness <clears throat> dun, 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 dun. <clears throat> all right well this day in history, June 23rd, let's start with 1960. The United States Food and Drug Administration declares Enovid to be the first officially approved combined oral contraceptive pill in the world. <gasps> Hooray! Woo! All Woo! right, so there's actually a, a whole bunch of shit on this one. Uh, I'm sure I'm going to fucking nail this one out first time out. Uh, Mestrinol. Mestrinol. Or uh, Noretronadel was the first combined oral contraceptive pill. And it was sold as Inovid in the U.S. and Inavid in the U.K. Not sure why there was a name change. Uh, That's common. Yeah. It was first approved on June 10th, 1957 by the FDA for treatment of menstrual disorders. Uh, Whatever those may be, I'm a man. I I know no such things. Well, let's see here. There's not enough bleeding. There's too much bleeding. There's pain, severe pain. No. More pain. No. Female orgasms a myth. Uh, uh, the FDA approved. <laughs> Where's Meredith? <an> <laughs> Where's Meredith? Get her in here. <laughs> the FDA approved an additional indication for use as a contraceptive on June 23rd, 1960. Uh, Woohoo! That's the followed, big one. The UK and Canada followed in 1961. Uh, so it was discontinued in 1988 because there was lots of other better things that weren't full of uh, high high estrogen. Mm, yeah, which but will high mess doses, you up and in- yeah. mess up the environment and so. increase the risk of you know certain cancers. Yeah. Mm. So there's actually some really cool history on this. I wanted to go into for a second. Uh, Inovid was the first hormonal hormonal birth control pill. It was uh, brought out by. Uh, gd uh, cyril and company and you know marketing blah blah blah. but um it was actually a joint effort between many individuals like uh, margaret sanger you might remember that name Catherine mccormick uh gregory pincus and uh, john rock so uh sanger first proposed the idea of a birth control pill and met with gregory pincus in 1950 to discuss a potential project both Sanger and Catherine McCormick believed that family planning and fertility regulation were essentially uh, were essential to giving women more rights and improving their lives. Uh, they sincerely believed that medical science could provide these these solutions, and both women felt that if a new contraceptive method were created, then it should be controlled by women, since they are the ones who get pregnant and bear the responsibility. Oh, if only that wisdom rang true today. I know, right? Yeah, well, if only it rang true then, too. But, yeah. Oh, true. Uh, Sanger, in particular, uh, viewed the pill as uh, important for the safety of women because of her experience as an obstetrics nurse working with poor women who had gone through dangerous and harmful abortions. Mm. So, yeah. Um, look Very up Margaret cool. Sanger. She's a badass. Too. Yeah, she really is. Badassery. And, uh, stuff You Missed in History Class did an episode on, on her about a year ago. Really? That is, uh, and her work in bringing contraceptives to the U.S. 
Very uh, good. Pretty yeah, spectacular. Another really good podcast. That one's that one's fun. Hmm. A uh, couple little tidbits here. Uh, this day in history, 1972, Title IX of the United States Civil Rights Act of 1964 is amended to prohibit sexual discrimination to any educational program receiving federal funds. Hooray! Yeah. And uh, I'm sensing the theme here. <laughs> well, women power. <laughs> yeah, that's totally going to ring true for the next one. This day in history, 1964, Joss Whedon, the creator of Buffy, is an American director, producer, screenwriter, is born. Women empowerment! Woo! (laughs) Slay those villains! Yeah, so... That's awesome. Yeah. I'll hail the Whedon verse. (laughs) Fucking A. Oh, man. Nice. Very nice. Bring back Firefly. Oh, God. Not gonna happen. I can hope. (laughs) However, a Broadway musical would be fun. A firefly? Yes. Somebody somebody threw that out on Facebook saying, you know, as successful as Hamilton's been, we should do one on Firefly. And I was like, oh, I would so pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That, that seems like the, the next thing they should conquer. Fucking A. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go ahead and take our first break, and then we'll be back with news. Atheist Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low price, full featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A R C H W A Y hosting.com. Hey, we're also brought to you by listeners just like you. Find out how you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash atheist nomads. That's P A T R E O N dot com forward slash atheist nomads. Of course, so one big huge downside of, of doing uh, news every other week is when there's a big story and we really want to cover it, uh, we end up being late to the game. So we're going to talk about the Pulse shooting. Uh, yeah. This was interesting for, for Lauren and I because we were Depressing. camping. We had our phones off and we pull into the mini glacier park entrance and see the flag at half mast and ask why is the flag at half mast and get told oh the biggest mass shooting in u.s history just happened yeah and it's like okay we're going back to our vacation and it was it, yeah and it was so <laughs> like off like just a thought it's like oh we should ask yeah yeah let's ask <laughs> asked and then we're like okay we're gonna go back to camping yep. now I, I i figured you know a former president died or yeah. something like that. No, no. Some another attack. Yeah. So somewhere. let's let's go ahead and go into the details. And but there is of course always one benefit of covering a story late. More is known about it. Yeah. And <laughs> goodness. There's there have, details about this coming out all the time now. Oh yeah. And there are so many freaking details. So the one of the, the easiest ways with a ongoing news story to get a good summary of what's known up to this point is Wikipedia. People go in and they keep it up to date as more gets gets known. So that is the, the main source we are working off of, not a whole bunch of random news articles. Uh, but uh, the shooter was 29-year-old Omar Mateen. Uh, he was of Afghan descent but was born in the United States. He traded shots with a cop before entering the club. The police then waited until they had ha- they had enough people before entering. Uh, Mateen, while in there, called 911, and he pledged his allegiance to ISIS, which, mm. according to ISIS, is enough. He <laughs> took hostages. That, that'll do, Peg. That'll and he- do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, was that insensitive? <laughs> he took hostages no. and told them if they were explosives. Maybe. So then instead of the police waiting to have enough manpower, they then had to wait for the SWAT team and the bomb squad. And in the end, 49 victims died. 53 were wounded. Uh, Mateen died. The police knocked down several walls as they drove armored vehicles into the nightclub. Uh, The night that this happened, there was a uh, trans woman uh, performing at the club. It was a hispanic or latino night and so most of the victims were uh, of of hispanic or or latino origin uh with about half of those being from puerto rico 
Uh, this was the deadliest incident of violence against LGBT people in the U.S. This was the deadliest mass shooting by a single gunman in the U.S. And it has largely been called... I've, I have seen hate crime thrown around, uh, but the most common description of it I've seen is terrorism. Yeah. Hate crime also applies. You, you attack mm-hmm. a place at, on Pride Week, it's going oh. to be a hate crime. Uh, that really depends on whether or not he's gay, I would think. Well, okay. Let's, Shouldn't let's, make a difference. Let's start with that. Um, was he gay? Uh, supposedly one of his former lovers is coming out and is on and on camera saying that the reason he shot up Pulse was because there was that's where he got rejected the most. There was okay. He had uh, accounts on several gay dating sites and apps. Um, he had been seen at Pulse at least eight or ten times. Mm-hmm. Usually drank alone. Uh, he had definitely been reported as hitting on a number of men. He was twice married to women. Uh, what I see is... He was married at the time, right? And married at the time, yeah, yeah with a three-year-old uh, son. Uh, what I see is a definite angle. He was uh, Muslim. Uh, Islam is anti-gay. Uh, there's been a lot of anti-gay hatred being spewed around throughout the United States over the last several months. Um, getting louder and louder every, uh, seems like every month. And if you have somebody who is conflicted about a sexuality, um, feels that it's wrong, backs out on it on occasion, but is trying not to, and is being fed simultaneously messages that he is wrong and evil and that people like him need to die. Uh, that seems like the perfect opportunity to drive him to do something like that. Uh, seems so that's like a, some terrorism breeding ground right there. Yeah. Which is what we've been saying all along. It really sounds like a case of a radicalized, conflicted closet case. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I'm sure that religion definitely played a, a part in in making him feel like he, what he did or what he wanted was dirty and wrong, and uh, that he could somehow make up for it by well, he kept marrying women. Yeah, I, that happens they, a lot. I have a feeling they might have been kind of beards in a way, and he was. Or forced by his family. Yeah. His dad adamantly came out and said, no, his son was not gay. Yeah. Uh, and that's what you expect from somebody who'd be also pressuring his son to marry and have children. Yeah. I would say, you know, he had a son. Maybe that was what he was going for. And then, but all going to Pulse all the time and having a bunch of accounts. It's not, this isn't just scoping it out. This is like, actively involved especially but, if he had a lover yeah and it's and it's sad because many times he himself the same guy supposedly yeah and this guy's a, so this guy's a victim and a horrible monster at the same time depending on what headline you read I, i'm gonna stick with horrible monster well i mean still i mean what he did was horrible i mean he killed half the people in the building that's just unforgivable but what drove him to that well We've got examples of that going on all the time, with especially recently with all the lots of this isn't. We're not just talking about cakes with me, me, mean messages on them. We're talking about people online, like actively going after other people, saying you should die, and if I ever find you, I will kill you, kind of things. Well, and the the huge, huge trend for religious freedom bills to allow for dem- uh, discrimination and the huge pushes to try to prohibit trans people from being able to pee in peace. That is all fueling anti-gay, it, fueling and being fueled by anti-LGBT 
rage. Yeah, and some people that got to this. Some guy. people claim that this this kind of thing hap, uh, gets worse right before it gets better. We're waiting for it mm-hmm. to get better. Hopefully, this will be the cusp of it. Hopefully, this will be our Port Arthur. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> That's a good, a good segue. Uh, yeah. Liberals are blaming access to guns. Eh. They I'm have, a liberal, and I'm not. They I'm have bullshit. They have yeah. uh, submitted several. Uh, bills for gun control, every single one of which, good idea. This, it is not related to this case in any way. Everything that Democrats have been proposing in Congress would have not prevented this. Everything that the Democrats have been proposing in Congress was sitting on somebody's desk, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Ooh, here's an opportunity to try and get this pushed through." <laughs> so, uh, Mateen was a security guard. He had attended with the police academy and got kicked out or dropped out. One of the two. I, I wasn't able to get which it was. Uh, while at the police academy, though, um, they had a barbecue. And when his hamburger, there was a chance that it might come in contact with pork. He threatened to kill everybody if it did. Definitely showing that he really wasn't uh, all that with it character that's not socially acceptable behavior which is surprising considering the fact that he passed a psyche valve ah but you pointed out that that psyche valve was a sham a sham Uh, basically uh, they didn't actually do the eval they did a standard written so the 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 record (laughs) showed that one psychiatrist or psychologist i think it was a psychologist had done it when he was asked by the media why did you pass this guy's psyche valve he said i didn't I wasn't even in the state when that happened. <laughs> He'd left. He'd moved out. The agency had mistakenly put his practice's name when it was actually handled by whoever had bought out this guy's practice. And they, the uh, psychologist who actually signed off on the eval uh, when questioned about it said, no, no, I never actually met with him. I just graded his written exam. It's called fraud, <laughs> by the way, when you uh-huh. use another doctor's name like that. Uh, well, either they use the other doctor's name or whoever was recording it was being sloppy. It's still fraud. It, somebody's really fucked somebody's up. Somebody's head rolled <laughs> as or a result should of this have. one. Uh, he possessed a firearms license. Oh, how responsible of him. He had no criminal record. Also fairly good. And even though he had been on terrorist watch lists... He wasn't at the time of the shooting. Sounds to me like he uh, would not have been a prime suspect. If with, with like everything that I know, like I've pushed for with um, gun control, he would have still been able to buy those guns. Or at least buy guns. He had an assault rifle. Assault rifles should not be something that civilians have. Because when you really think about it, and here's the simplest reason why. He won a firefight with a cop and got to go on and kill 50 people. That definitely kills any kind of a good guy with a gun argument when a cop can't even stop a gunman. And what that comes down to, the cop would have basically been taking a knife to a gunfight. <laughs> a 9 mil versus a SIG. Not a chance. You're not going to be able to effectively take down someone with an assault rifle with a handgun. And we don't want our police to have to be armed with assault rifles because we don't want to live in a militarized state. We don't want our country to turn into a war zone. And the easiest way to do that is make sure that weapons of war are not here. You're going to get some uh, interesting feedback on that one. Ah! On that soapbox, Dustin. Assault weapons do not belong (laughs) in a peaceful country. Period. I don't care if you're a collector. I don't care if you have a perfect record, perfect training, and you are the perfect person to handle it well. I don't give a fuck because they don't belong here. Ah! Well, I'm going to start by saying that uh, first of all, I own three assault weapons, um, and 
yeah, I <laughs> definitely a different time in my life. I, I used to like to go out and target shoot and stuff like that. And you know what? I would rather have, um, uh, well, all of those people alive than own, own those guns. So uh, if, if and, the gun, let's, a, let's say Tacoma, I'm, 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 I'm actually saying like all guns, I, I would rather have the government have an actual gun buyback. I don't want to sell mm -hmm. them to was, other people. I don't want to sell them to gun stores so they can turn around and sell them to somebody else. A proper mon monetized gun buyback through the government where they are destroyed afterwards. Mm -hmm. I would be down for that. Cool. I, yeah, I, I agree. I have no issue with what it, what it I, I really think it really comes down to is you need to look at what's the purpose of the weapon. Uh, the, the old argument used to be people need to have access to guns so they can go hunting. Okay, a hunting rifle versus something designed to kill people is very different. Fine, but it's not fucking 1800 anymore either. Yeah. Um, <sighs> and I, you're, you're I'm, not. I'm, I'm fine with getting rid of basically all guns <laughs> from, from everybody. If, if all we left was hunting rifles, which most countries that we think of as having gun bans, Canada, Britain, Australia, Australia. it's not difficult to get a hunting rifle. Because you can't kill many people with one. Oh, and that's the key there. It's not just that you can't kill people with one, because everybody will argue, well, somebody with a knife can still kill people. Mm -hmm. It's about the amount of people. You cannot have walked into that club with a knife or a small gun and kill 50 people. If you had, if he just had the pistol, um, he probably would have killed... The, 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 the casualty count probably would have been a quarter of what it is. Yeah. And that's with pistols that are designed to kill people. If all he had was a hunting rifle or a shotgun, um, the count would have been, what, four or five people dead? Still would have been tragic, but not 50 dead. Yeah, most, most hunting rifles that actually have a, have, have a few rounds in, inside of them, it, it usually top out at like five to maybe seven. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get it like a... A decent shotgun with a, a long ass uh, extension t extension tube and get seven rounds in there, maybe one in the chamber also. So eight eight shells. That would be really fucked up to do in a really small uh -huh. room. Well, but it's crowded you know, room, crowded crowded small room. You're still not killing fifty people. And crowded room with a long weapon, they're gonna be able to get it away from you. Yeah, yeah, so you're exactly. not going to get many rounds off. Uh, it's yeah. easy though because we're preaching to the choir. So and not completely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I like telling people that I'm approaching this as a multiple gun owner, and I still have a a gun in in the gun safe. And one thing that's kind of held me back from selling it is the fact that you know, if I do, someone else will buy it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Can't you I, I would, just I would much destroy rather, it yourself? Yeah. Yeah, and be out a few hundred dollars. So you I would mean, that, prefer to sell it? I would, I would prefer to sell it to the government. To the government. To so there we go. Yeah. There we go, government. We're a, willing a to sell our program. guns if you're willing to buy them and destroy them. Yeah. It won't cost any more than what you spend on a day in Iraq or Afghanistan. <laughs> oh, and it would help prevent violence here in the states uh the, the homeland oh and and the whole argument that guns are needed for home defense uh does not match up with the stats it, and and even if it is even if you are in the fucking country or whatever and you think you need a gun for home defense fine ish but you don't need a fucking you don't need an ar to do that no I mean, <laughs> Is, is the fucking court? Is the fucking going out drug cartel stuff. coming after you? They're just shooting that old refrigerator uh, down. Or, or like, <laughs> what Mexican drug cartel is coming after you that you need a fucking th thirty round mag to fucking defend mm -hmm. yourself? Obama. Uh, oh yeah, government. Yeah, because uh, one word: fucking drones <laughs> <laughs> and Whoa. tanks. Yeah, and all about the drones now. Apaches. Yeah, you ain't got shit on F sixteens. I know all about drones. I watched an episode of Bob's Burgers about them. Cruise missiles. <laughs> those are all things that private citizens they can't can be weaponized. Buy. Uh, and, 
and, and that the government can well use on you in certain well, so basically if the government's going to come for you you're screwed anyway yeah. so yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the guns are, are not going to help yeah, Although with no. what we learned with the Malheur Wild, National Wildlife Refuge, the government won't come for you. Uh, don't even get yeah. me started. Uh, they did yeah. just fledge five great horned owlets. Mm. Uh-huh. So the birds have come back and they are they are fledging. Okay, Yay. so let's go ahead and move on to the next point. Um, conservatives mm. are blaming Islam. They this guy had no contact with Ax, with Axis ISIS prior to it. <laughs> Or there is no evidence that he had contact with any other extremist Islamic group prior to the attack. But ISIS has a policy that they are happy to take credit for anything if anybody swears allegiance to them during the attack. And it's a strategy of being able to keep everybody off guard. Because that way, if you're a lone wolf, which they love, and this guy was... um, Anybody tracking ISIS or looking for ISIS activity in the U.S. wouldn't know this was coming. Right. Oh, so the chatter wouldn't have given anything away. Nope, there was none. The chatter started... Was this guy really just... I mean, it just sounded like he was just a loner who just decided to throw it to them anyway. Yeah. Throw them a bone. Like, it sounded like this was definitely more his plot, his plan. He was doing it for a specific reason. But that and is it had very little to do with ISIS. That he wasn't is getting allo- money from them. He wasn't getting orders. But that's allowing this to be called an act of terrorism. Well, okay then. And okay, if you want to call it an act of terrorism, a terrorist who, under any generally considered to be reasonable standard, would have continued to have been able to legally buy firearms. To commit an act of terror in the United States. That is not something we want. Say what? If you follow any kind of reason, what's generally considered to be reasonable gun control, like what the Democrats tried to push through Congress, he would have still, if that had all been enacted, he would have still have been able to purchase the weapons he did legally to commit an act of terror on the, on the United States. Yep. Uh, but as far as Islam... Uh, okay, yeah, right now Islam is more likely to lead people to killing people in the name of religion than any other religion is right now. However, the loudest voice of hate in this country right now is conservative Christians. So Which is what led to this and possibly in the first place. Mm-hmm. If you're pissed off, uh, oh, uh, Mr. Deity did a, uh, Brian Keith Dalton did a, uh, Way of the Mister on uh, Ted Cruz's comment that how liberals need to stop defending the uh, beliefs of the people who whose hate caused this. Mm. Uh, well, like everybody who follows the God of Abraham, because they're all homophobic. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy to put a label on it and put other. Than to look at, you know, yourself. And well, if we want to see where it came from, if we want to put all the really, you know, dangerous suspects on a watch list, then we should pretty much be starting with uh, white males. Mm-hmm. White males between the age of twenty three and fifty five. Oh, actually, one of the the easiest ways to cut down on gun violence would just be to prohibit all males under the age of thirty five from owning firearms. Okay. I I give it 40. (laughs) (laughs) He was 29. You want to get past those midlife crises before before you allow them to have guns again. 40's right when that's that's hitting. Right, so 50, really. You know, if you're 50, you want to take up hunting, go for it. Okay, let's just prohibit men from having guns. Let let it be women only. It would seriously... Like a real man. Use a fucking bow. (laughs) (laughs) Or as one person in Idaho Falls did once, a samurai sword. Hmm. (laughs) <laughs> all right and we, we Wait, do he hunted with a sword no he tried to oh. attack people with a sword okay I, I i was gonna give him serious props for hunting with a sword <laughs> thank goodness no but <laughs> yes and uh, uh sticking with with christians um 
there have been a number of pastors who have been um, praising Mateen's actions and hoping that God will finish the job, including uh, Pastor uh, Donnie Romero and Roger Jimenez. Um, Jimenez made the news with a sermon advocating the government should use a firing squad to blow their brains out. The LGBT people. Mm -hmm. And uh, Romero said, these 50 sodomites are all perverts and pedophiles and they are the scum of the earth and the earth is a little better place now. And I'll take it a step further because I heard on the news today that there are still several dozen of these queers in ICU and intensive care. And I will pray to God like I did this morning. I will do it tonight. I will pray that God will finish the job that this man started and he will end their life. And by tomorrow morning, they will all be burning in hell just like the rest of them. So they don't get any more opportunity to go out there and hurt little children. I love that last three words, hurt little children, because that happens all of the time. Yes, by uh, straight white males. Straight white males. Mm Mm-hmm. Older, straight, white males, just like the guy who's spewing this. Especially yeah. the ones with the collars, you know, the, the oh, black oh, shirts yeah. and little white collar thingies, yeah. So, Jane, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if... It, it, pot kettle. Pot <laughs> kettle, yeah, and... <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> if you, you want your religion to be viewed as being softer or not worthy of us going after you... Don't be such a fucking asshole. <laughs> you look at the Muslim community. What the way they responded to this was by asking all of their mem- members in Florida to donate blood. And what's this guy doing? Praying that these people who are just out trying to have some fun and these and victims, community dancers victims praying that God will kill them. What kind of a fucking monster do you worship? <laughs> ah, Mm-mm. Yahweh. All Yahweh? right, no way. No All right, way. we have have totally uh, snap. <laughs> run this one and uh, dug this into the. Uh, anyway, we, we've gone way over on this this section, so we're going to take a break and we'll be a dead horse. Yes, we will be back with uh, the rest of the news. We love hearing from our listeners. You can email us at contact at atheistnomads.com, tweet us at atheistnomads, send us a message on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash atheistnomads, or better yet, call us and leave us a message at 541-203-0666. We might even play it on the show. You can also help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcast directory of choice. Facebook has been receiving a lot of criticism lately for closing many Arab League or excuse me Arab language atheist or anti-Islam groups and pages. Boo. Uh, this has affected more than one hundred thousand users of Facebook. Atheist Alliance Middle East and North Africa is taking the lead in this effort to criticize them and get them to reverse their actions, and they blame it on cyber jihadist groups who have been launching mass campaigns and using automated scripts to report these groups, pages, and people as having violated community standards. And in one case, these efforts have led to death threats and the murder of Yemeni activist Omar Batawil. Nailed it. So again, those of you who are listening to us outside of the country in places where that's not usually appropriate, please be careful. Fucking Yeah. Hell. But that doesn't mean that, you know, don't let Facebook trample your rights either. Uh Uh-huh. Protest. Protest it. Fight it. It's really... Especially considering... scripts. Especially considering the fact that the CEO of Facebook is an atheist. (laughs) He's on our side. Right. This is automated stuff that's going on. All you have to do is protest it, really. It's low-level staffers. Uh, Protests are difficult with Facebook. Do it anyway. Uh, but do it, um, appeal, fight it, and oh, start new groups. Hmm. Start yeah. new groups and have them in English as well. <laughs> yeah, you, you at, won't least, be... at least the, the, uh, the opening statement of the group. 
you won't be facing the same kind of uh, community standards if you're going with a uh, English language group. Because apparently, if it's in the Arab language, then community standards mean no blasphemy against Islam. Yeah, there's <laughs> loopholes for that. Whereas if it's in English, anything fucking goes. Pretty much. There's some real assholes out there, too. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about mo- more about them later. Yeah. All right. Wesley is going to take the next couple stories, so... Oh, boy. All right. So, this is weird. Um, <laughs> so, uh, North Carolina Dem- Democrats are going to add protecting non-believers to their platform. Yay! Pretty damn cool. This is weirdly progressive. Yeah, especially for, you know, North that Carolina. other coast. so uh suzanne werner is the chair of the secular coalition for north carolina and has used her retirement to become active in politics at the recent state convention for the democratic party where she was a delegate they were discussing the platform when they got to civil rights section which reads civil rights racism discrimination hate and bigotry still exist therefore there is a need to continue to fight those who would take away the civil rights for which we fight so hard since many devoted their lives to social change, it is our obligation to demand civil rights for all people, regardless of race, gender, gender identification, political persuasion, sorry, political persuasion, national origin, religion, age group, and sexual orientation. She went to the microphone and proposed an amendment to include, quote unquote, no religion. She was uh, questioned on the source of some of her stats, and she uh she used in her argument but uh, no one opposed the amendment although she did accept an alternative wording of quote lack thereof quote following the word religion so odd however that is but you know what else? it's an awkward yeah wor- it, awkwardly it, worded structure uh, sentence yeah however uh she has rec- uh, reconsidered that and will try to get the platform committee to change it to something stronger before the wording is finalized. So it's an awesome start and mm-hmm. fucking a, this is pretty fucking cool. Well, and this is one way that we can get stuff added into national party platforms. You yeah. get it added at the state level, get it so that your state delegates that are going to the national convention, try to push it at the national level. And yeah, it would be nice for people with no religion to have better protection and better representation. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, there's uh, Bernie gave a speech just a few days ago, and there were some people thinking he was going to, you know, support Hillary and all this. And no, he's going to keep on keeping on. But a lot of a lot of his speech focused on telling people to fucking get into politics low level jobs doesn't matter what it is get into politics push push the agenda stuff like this this is stuff that we need to do as well mm-hmm. whether or not you support bernie if you're an atheist you're non-believer agnostic doesn't matter get into politics put, you know say you know normalize the shit for one and two you know do what she did do what suzanne did and you know mm-hmm Change. Make it okay. Change. You can make a change. change. Yeah. But you yeah. have to actually be, be the fucking change. Get involved in order to do that. And yeah, you know, if we don't end up moving out of Idaho in the, the near future, I will be definitely running for political office. Hmm. Just to, nice. you know start with something start simple. With something. Like highway district. He really <laughs> likes the highways. I do. I, I, I think there's so much that can be done there. Hmm. Form your own water district, then you can like charge whatever you want to, and nobody will be able to do a fucking thing about it. Uh, all water already has districts here, well, and the water districts are more powerful than cities. Yeah, and right now they're actually kind of scary, screwing over the cities in eastern Idaho. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah. There's some fucking scandalous people in that shit. Yeah. All right. All right. So, oh, this next one's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Another pot kettle. Um, <laughs> no, I was, seriously. Uh, Trump questions whether or not Clinton is actually a Christian. Bum, bum, bum. So, womp, uh, womp. Womp, womp. There we go. That's a good one. <laughs> Donald Trump claims to be both a Christian and a Protestant, uh, regardless of how redundant that is. And his uh, favorite favorite 
uh, book of the Bible is Corinthians 2, despite that it should actually be 2 Corinthians. Um, so uh, an actual quote from him, uh, we don't know anything about Hillary in terms of religion. And uh, yeah, despite the books that she's written, uh, mm-hmm. pointed out by a friend of mine. Uh, thanks, Amber. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, friend of the show, Amber. Yeah. Um, now she's been in the public eye for years and yet there's no, there's nothing out there. There's like nothing out there. It's going to be an (laughs) extension of Obama, but it's going to be worse because with Obama, you had your guard up with Hillary. (laughs) You don't. And it's going to be worse. He he doesn't matter what he says. It all sounds so Trump. Uh huh. Oh my God. And by Trump, uh, weird, repetitive repetitive stupid and not saying anything yeah i love that how we've had our guard up against obama but we're not going to have it with hillary it's like um have you seen your party yeah their guard is so far up their asses coming out the nose (laughs) oh goodness but yes he's he's just proving over and over again that he's just a joke. All, he, a joke. all he does is say the same thing a few times and then people are like oh yeah that's that's true I don't know. It's kind of fucking crazy. Yeah. It's kind uh, of a straight up lie. Well, you know, I, I I just I know that you know that that Trump is well, he's really just kind of Trump. Sure. And and let me repeat myself. And, and you know that Trump is just a fucking Trump. He's just a Trump. And yeah. <laughs> That's good. Trump? Oh, this man. <laughs> Everybody's enjoying watching the train wreck of his campaign right now. It's just so glorious to no, find out that he's getting in all sorts of trouble yeah. with his finances. You know what we need to do, But he's though? still pulling well. We need to turn Talk him into people. Smurf. Smurf. <laughs> no, we need to turn him into Smurf. So Trump is a trumping Trump. Mm, yes. yes. Dump the Trump. I, I took a Trump on the front doorstep of the, of Mr. Trump's house. <laughs> and lit it on fire i lit it on trump (laughs) (laughs) oh Oh my my gosh like if i had a little asshole dog i would name it trump (laughs) like one of those ones that just bark and bit and hated everything it's like yeah you're a trump i I, I, I had a baby i'd name it trump no you wouldn't yes i would no you you name him bernie no Bernard. Bernard. Second to me, I can't have babies. No, go uh. for the other side. It's Nard. <laughs> Nardy. <laughs> okay, anyway. Mm. We're going to go with something um, a little local here. Yes, and Lauren's going to take oh. this one. Yeah. Thank you for letting me take this one. Oh, giver of news articles. I, uh, well, <laughs> Actually, I'm the one that it. found this one. So yeah. this is there have been rumors all over Facebook about a five-year-old girl in Twin Falls, Idaho, being raped at knife point by Syrian refugees. Um, While the story was based on an unfortunate incident, several details were skewed. There were no Syrians. There were no recent refugees. There was no knife. This was basically an anti-refugee hoax shared amongst the xenophobic people of the internet, many of whom apparently crossed my Facebook feed. (laughs) Yeah. Um, For example, uh, the source... Of the news article, if you actually clicked on the website, you would see the word nigger, towel right. head, and have lots of Nazi imagery. So not not a good source at all. Needless to say, uh, Snopes, the Idaho Statesman, and the Boise Weekly have all come out proclaiming that the story was false. I do have to say, though, that condolences go out to the family involved, because a, a little girl was involved in an incident, Um and that's that's not something to glaze over. It's just not worth shutting down our borders over. Yeah, and this is a place that many refugees have come to take refuge. Yeah, which is a beautiful thing. Bucky, quiet. Twin Falls, um, the Magic <laughs> Valley. Bucky, shut up. Twin <laughs> Falls is a beautiful area that has um, that has been accepting a lot of refugees. However, they haven't received any Syrian refugees. So we don't know where that rumor came from, really. Um, it was obviously just lies. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's really unfortunate that something like that would happen. Well, and, and the really aggravating thing with this anti-refugee thing is 
It's because they're, they, they, they hate Muslims and they hate terrorism and they hate the extremists. Who these people are trying to flee? Yes. These are the people who are trying to run away from that, not bring it here. They just want to be able to grow their vegetables and sell them at the farmer's market for low, low prices. And to be able to raise their children without them being taken hostage and raped by jihadists. <laughs> oh, right. yeah. I thought you were yeah. going to say be, raped yeah, by take, the public education system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bad joke. That's not appropriate, Lord. Yeah. In a probes. All right. On that note, we're going to take our last break and we'll be back with science and technology. As a listener of the show, I'm going to assume you love my sexy vocal stylings. If you love the rest of the show as much as my voice, consider giving us the resources we desperately need to purchase quality cocaine and Red Bull. We make it super easy to make a one-time donation or to support us on a per episode, monthly, or even annual basis using PayPal or Patreon. Find out more at AtheistNomads.com. Use the links on the right side of the page. A dollar an episode is all we ask. All right, we're going to go ahead and jump right into science. Science, 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 science. All right, so have you guys heard about our new second moon? Yay! Yay. Yay! This has been uh this has been out on the interwebs for a few days and it is super exciting. Basically what happens is on a fairly regular basis an asteroid will come in contact with Earth's gravitational pull and get caught in that or in a synchronous orbit around Earth. Um, this happens once in a while, but the asteroid always eventually flings off, flings off or falls to the Earth and dies. However, there is this new asteroid that was discovered, well, it was discovered a couple of years ago, but they've been watching it, and it's remaining stable. The orbit is not decaying. It's kind of dancing around a little bit, but overall, it's pretty much staying around Earth. That makes it Earth's official second non-man-made Satellite. Yay! It's going to be sticking around for a couple of centuries, so I, I suggest we, that we name it. Uh, we've come to the name Lunita the Tiny. <laughs> so how long has go. it been here? Well, it was discovered in 2013, and they've been watching it ever since, and mathematical models show that it's going to be sticking around for a couple of centuries. Hmm. It's a f- no, it was discovered April 27. Was it? Yeah. Oh, I heard something about 2013. And it was named uh, 2016 H03. Oh, I misconstrued that. Yeah, so 2016, April 27th. So, yeah, we have a mini moon. I'm just wondering, like, they discovered it just recently, but I'm wondering, like, how long it's actually been around. Oh, as for that. (laughs) Who knows? I don't know. There's so much stuff going on up there that I'm not sure how often people are actually watching out for something so close. Well, and it has because people are always looking for, you know, asteroids coming fucking directly at us. And this one pretty much this one snuck in. This one snuck in. It's (laughs) it's not all that close and it has an irregular orbit. It's uh, the orbit is 38 to 100 times the distance between the Earth and the moon, Luna. And it uh, is only, what, 40, 40 meters across and 100 meters wide? Yeah, it's, yeah, pretty, it's pretty darn we're t- small. So we're, we're talking football fields. <gasps> the, yeah. The, the article says that it's, it's, it's been in orbit for probably around 100 years, hmm. which means they have no clue. <laughs> And what's really funny is all of you Sailor Moon fans out there are totally freaking out because, yes, we finally have a chibi moon. (laughs) You guys don't get the joke, but laugh at it anyway. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I actually do. Oh, well, good for you. Good for you. (laughs) A little bit of pop culture there. I like my anime. Especially the one where women undress in a transformation scene. Ooh. Do I need to watch some Sailor Moon? Yes. (laughs) Yes, Dustin, you do. You're missing out on so much. Okay, a recent study published online at the Journal of Epidemiology and Community Health has shown that a possible correlation between university education and certain types of brain tumors, most notably those called gliomas, um, that's pretty funny. So basically, okay, so basically what this says is... um, if you've gone to university for more than three years, you have a higher chance of getting brain cancer. Wow. <laughs> now, this is an observational <laughs> so, so study. College so rots your brain? Panic. 
And college we'll causes that. cancer. <laughs> Cause, yeah, more like maybe the debt causes cancer. <laughs> um, in women, it is up to a 23% more likely chance of getting gliomas than those who did not go on to university. And in men, it was 19%. Um, they also studied other socioeconomic statuses as well as uh, what kind of job types the people people have. So if you have a managerial job, you're more likely to suffer from these gliomas than if you were in a non-managerial occupation. Yes, I escaped. So what that tells me <laughs> is that if you make more money, if you have a higher stress job, and that's a result of going to university, you're probably going to get brain cancer. <laughs> Or at least you're going to have a higher chance of it. Um, reason, probably you eat higher fatty foods, maybe. Less less fiber, maybe. Maybe you sit at a desk all day and don't move around, maybe. Yeah. Starting to sound familiar? <laughs> of course. Uh, this is just an observational study. There is it's, it's correlation, not causation. Exactly. But it makes for a really cool headline. Yes. And it also will be cool to see... What the actual causes, like what you just mentioned, um, those likely are the actual causes um, to actually uh, show those. Right. Mm. So, yeah, <laughs> kick, kick cancer's butt by, you can still go to university, I still highly encourage it, but maybe you remain in an active lifestyle and eat healthy and do all that stuff that you're supposed to do. And avoid salary. And avoid salaried positions, because they'll always make you work more than if you just got paid hourly. And but avoid being gonna, a manager because it sucks. But if you're going to have salary, put peanut butter on it. <laughs> yeah, with little raisins on it so they look like ants. Really? No. Yes. I have a thing about ants, no. Okay. But I like well, it, But I like raisins. It's a good kid snack, which I'm craving now. <laughs> All right. And lastly, for this is really interesting. This was just released today. Um, that would be a wetness day. For most definitions, uh, death occurs when the body becomes completely inert, with brain and bodily functions ending. Mm. But what about genes? According to this new study out of the University of Washington on mice and zebrafish, hundreds of genes not only remain active, but some even turn on after death. This is really cool, guys. Okay, so up to 48 hours after death, genes are still actively producing RNA, which is the building blocks for... Proteins. The culprits include some fetal development genes and some that are associated with different forms of cancer. So there's after about 24 hours after the body dies, you reach peak gene proliferation. I guess Hmm. they're all the, you know, we got a lot more activity about 24 hours after death, and then it starts to decrease until finally 48 hours after what would normally be called death, the body is completely dead wow so yeah mon- monitoring mrna has never been so much fun <laughs> way to go scientists doing your science <laughs> all right well we have some feedback uh first one i want to cover and i did uh of course on uh, sunday put out a uh, little message uh, about this one uh, i got an email from brian uh this is regarding the sci-fi nomads uh little pilot teaser If you're going to change the show over to a sci-fi format and stop the atheist subject of the show, then you've lost me as a listener. Way to stick to your guns, Brian. Yes. uh, No, we are not changing atheist nomads. No. Uh, This is an atheist show, and one of the the general rules of of podcasting is if you change subjects, you get a new feed. And a new name. And a new name. Everything, yeah. And a new graphic. I'm making an icon. Because especially considering the fact that, you know, the, yes, there is going to be a rather large overlap in the, the, the Venn diagram between people who like atheist podcasts and people who like sci-fi. But there's a lot of people who are religious who like sci-fi. There are people who wouldn't want to just, just wouldn't want to listen to an atheist podcast who like sci-fi. And of course, not all atheists like sci-fi. So, yeah. Heathens. <laughs> yeah, uh, those trumps. But most of the the feedback we've gotten so far has been excitement and people suggesting uh, stuff that we have to watch. Yes, suggestions. Anyway, and uh, regarding episode one fifty one from William via Facebook, Lords of Acid is not metal; it's industrial. That should have been prefaced with um actually. 
<laughs> with, with you sliding your glasses back onto your face. Um, actually, lures of acid is not metal. It is industrial. <laughs> yeah. Which, there, are, there is a genre for every band out there now. So, forgive us if our terminology was a little... Well, we went down a rabbit hole on this one a little bit. Me and him chatting back and forth on this. And uh, <laughs> oh, that's Lords right. of you Acid has tons, uh, tons of uh, techno to their industrial. So and, and, you you and, get, and, you got peanut butter on my chocolate, and I got chocolate on your peanut butter. So fuck it, let's call it a draw. I'm having a techno party <laughs> in my chair right now. Okay. Uh, and, and, regarding and, episode and, 149 from at Randy Lamanda on Twitter. At Holy Crap TV at Atheist Nomads just got back from Colorado and playing catch up listening loved the five podcaster episode. Wes has terrible luck or excuse me horrible luck. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So uh, yes, help him out, give him money. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll be honest. <laughs> that Any, was beyond be luck. That was malicious intent. Because right, right about now, I have a credit card with a very large bill on it. Because I said, fuck it, and I got the laptop that I wanted. And so. from Gerardo again via email, it was very nice listening to my email read out loud on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. I should have written it better in hindsight. Ha ha. Yeah. I was listening to your conversation with other podcasters, a segment about the denial of science and the mentality almost conspiratorial about the scientific community. It reminded me of a possible argument against the claim that scientists uh, must be colluded to deny the- or deluded to deny theism. I don't think I've ever read it, and you might find it interesting, so here it goes. Basically, it revolves about the recognition and acceptance of the Big Bang as the current model, plus inflation and all that for the origin of the universe. If you think about it, before they realized that the expansion of the universe was implied by relativity and empirically supported by redshift and background cosmic radiation, physicists had a very strong case about Genesis. Even Einstein conformed to the theory of an infinitely old universe, he added the cosmological constant in what he called his biggest blunder to avoid precisely having a Big Bang. Then along comes the overwhelming evidence and realization of Big Bang, uh, curiously proposed by a priest, Lee, uh, Le Mater. Le Mater, and the scientific community basically gave one of the largest apologist weapons, uh, conceding that there was indeed a beginning, made it possible for people such as William Lane Craig to at least pretend they understand physics, Always when it is good for their preconceived notions, of course. You can claim it was a believer who proposed the theory, but really it doesn't hold up uh, how highly renowned and honored were the scientists who worked hard in proving and completing the theory of Big Bang. If there ever was a claim that atheists uh, should ever conspire to control, can't think of any other than this. This would have been the perfect example of those so-called Christian creation scientists who rub it on their faces they discovered that independently, uh, but I guess they were busy discussing the mystery of the Trinity. So the last scientists wanted the truth, and it means that there was most likely beginning of the universe, and it is only mean- the only meaningful way of describing it, so be it. What do you think? Um, pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, fucking A. Not succinct, but <laughs> got the point across. And this was one that I couldn't condense down, so I went ahead and went with reading the whole that thing. Down. No, that's pretty damn good. <laughs> You're yeah. right. Totally. Um, yeah, t- t- total respect goes to the scientists who actually proved it. Anybody can say how the world was created, but to prove it, mm-hmm. that takes some serious science. Well, like I, I, when I was in college uh, at Walla Walla Adventist uh, University, the um, chair of the physics department fully accepted that the universe was 13.7 billion years old, that at least the rocks of the earth were here four and a half billion years ago. Uh, but he loved the fact that you, that anything beyond a certain number of, you know, a certain fraction of a second after the big bang, uh, everything before that would be speculation upon speculation, or as he liked to put it, speculation squared. So <laughs> he even had a graphic of, Speculation squared on a on a graph. The Big Bang going out from the, the center with the expansion of the universe. And on the other side was Michelangelo's uh, God reaching out and touching it. <laughs> and you know what? I actually respect that belief system more than people who thought that the world was created 4,000 years ago. Well, and this is... Well, 
he still believed that there was no life on Earth until six thousand years ago. Oh, sorry, six. He, he, he was still a, he was still young Earth, but he believed in an old universe. Universe, yeah. And sure. that is the more common position now. Okay, well. for young Earth creationists. Uh, but that is why I can't fault deists. If you believe that there must have been a god to start the Big Bang, um, I think it's a very weak position because that all you have left is a very weak god of the gaps. Really, the two gaps we have are what, hap- what caused the Big Bang and abiogenesis. And if that's all you have to pin your faith on and, and what kind of a god that you're, you're painting who started the universe and then started life and that was it. Well, that's a see, pretty so, weak god. Happy well, little start, life. Started started happy the clouds. universe thirteen point eight year billion years ago, then fucked off. Dude, then, it was the universe. Then, like, he took a nap. Then like a billion <laughs> years ago, came back and fucking snapped his fingers again. Come on, I mean, I'm gonna create a perfect little planet. Bing. No, just started the first bacteria. Sure. Yes. Well, the first life, but he fucked off yeah. for like billions. Of- yep. Yeah, oh yeah this is seriously like a part-time job he's not here really i mean he's just a million yeah. miles away yeah he's, he's like a you know the the 19 year old pizza delivery kid that just fucking wants to you know make money so he can buy video games and live in his mom's basement mm-hmm. yeah just does it like twice a week just, yeah so yeah that's the god of deism that's, uh I, that's the god of 19 year old pizzaism <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, if you want to reach out to us, you can always email us at contact at atheistnomads.com. You can call us at 541-203-0666. Tweet us at Atheist Nomads. Hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com slash Atheist Nomads. Uh, we have no new patrons. Um, Share us with your friends. And, and subscribe. If you are listening in iTunes, actually subscribe in iTunes. That's what, what bumps us up in the, the rankings. Um, I have actually noticed, though, that there has been a... a rather nice increase in downloads recently okay so it's and the the trend has been continuing so after quite the stable period we are our our listener base is growing again so thank you thank you thank you keep it up over the last few episodes we've been getting a few hundred more people so that's really yeah yeah uh so yeah totally uh fucking go to the itunes uh whatever fucking apple store they got uh the google play store radar apps download the apps fucking wherever you get us please write us mm-hmm. so fucking app stores you know you can rate us there too so that'd be really awesome and uh podcast addict i do want to give a, a major shout out to our listeners there that is our second largest download source holy Woo-hoo! shit second only to apple wow so apple good. users you fuckers are slacking podcast addict <laughs> listeners you guys rock Dude. Dude, start start fucking rating us. What the fuck? <laughs> yes. Subscribe. Do Subscribe. it for the puppies. And uh, yeah. we do also have a mailing list. This is something I set up a few what? months ago and oh. forgot to mention. <laughs> <laughs> One person has Did found it. Did you start it. a Yahoo forum too? <laughs> One person has yeah. found it and signed up. But yes, if you want to be notified of new episodes by email, sign up for our mailing list. Go to atheistnomads.com. It's on the right Right below the ways to give us money. Or just check every <laughs> Thursday, because seriously, it's every Thursday. Yeah, emails can be nice, though. Yeah, yeah. so, and don't forget, use that uh, Amazon link to buy your stuff. We'll get a little bit of scratch, and, uh, you know, that buy your sex toys through there, because, you know, I do. Or your puppy toys. Puppies. Oh, could be Full the Rocco. same thing. He's licking the microphone. Oh, they better not be the same thing. <laughs> That's just creepy. Anyway, on that note, we'll be back next week with an interview. Uh, thank you all for listening, downloading, and subscribing. We Big love you. Big rubber bones. Not going there. <laughs> <laughs>Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find show notes and contact information at atheistnomads.com. Follow us on Twitter at Atheist Nomads. And like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash atheistnomads. Please subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcatcher of choice. And while you're there, feel free to leave us a review. Theme music is courtesy of Sturdy Fred. Until next time, this has been the Atheist Nomads.